Hey, what's up you guys? I'm back again. I know it's crazy. I'm just kind of cranking out the videos again due to some crazy circumstances. I have a lot of free time on my hands right now um, during the day. So the last video that I did was for this little gem right here. And this is the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder from Black Magic. And I just kind of talked about getting it and what some of my planned uses for it are. And after putting that video out, I had several requests for me to put together something talking about the setup of this, like what all is involved with the setup and what kind of hardware, software, uh, external device requirements you might have. So I'll go over that. It's going to be pretty simple. You'd be surprised at just how easy this thing is to set up. Um, so I'll go over hooking it up to, I'm running with an iMac back here, so I'm going to be hooking it up to that. Uh, the setup you'll find is going to be the same for pretty much any computer that you're using. Um, software side, again, ridiculously easy to set up. I'll be doing it on OS X. Um, and I know if you're a Windows user, this setup is going to be very similar, but I won't be going over that, obviously. Um, so that's what today's video is all about. And before we jump into that video, just give you a little peek of the next video coming up. And... I'm excited about this one too. I get excited about everything, I guess. But um, so my friends over at Lens Baby came out with a crazy new product. And when I say crazy, I mean crazy as in fun and cool, uh, which is what Lens Baby is all about. And that product is this one. It's the Lens Baby Trio 28. And if you can see this picture right here, it gives you an idea that this is definitely not going to be a normal throw on the, the camera lens and start shooting kind of lens. It's very different, very unique. Um, I own the Composer Pro, very fun lens that I throw in the bag every once in a while when I feel like it's time to break out of that rut of just standard photos and do something a little more creative. And that's exactly what um, what the Trio 28 does. So just a little quick a bit, a bit about the Trio 28, which I have here on my pen f which the trio 28 and silver looks pretty cool on a, a silver camera um so really quickly the trio by the name you can tell there are three lenses in one lens um it's like this crazy turret style system and you just rotate through different lenses they have three other different optics on here i'll go into more detail about that with example photos from that in my next video so if you're not subscribing it's time to subscribe right now so that you can see when this video comes out as well so very cool thank you lens baby awesome to send that over my way let's get going with this review here we go all right so let's get setting up first things first i'm going to hook up the thunderbolt cable to my thunderbolt display hopefully i don't pull the camera off the tripod because i'm tethered with a uh, lav mic here so let me get around behind my display and plug this thunderbolt cable in all right thunderbolt cable is plugged in so there's step one so we plug the Thunderbolt cable into the Thunderbolt side, which is indicated with what looks like a lightning bolt, whatever. <laughs> Good job, Apple. So we plug that in. And I don't know that you'll be able to see it on the video or not, but right next to the, the connection there, there's a little tiny hole. There's a little white LED inside of there. You can kind of see it. So that indicates that you do have power and connection running. Next thing, hook up HDMI. HDMI is hooked up. So we are all hooked up. All we have to do is hook up a camera. But first, what I'm going to do is I am going to wake up my computer here and I'm going to go into my system preferences. And in my preferences, there's a, uh, a preference control panel here. The and I'll move it over to the other screen. It's the Blackmagic desktop video setup. Okay, so basically this comes with your your studio recorder. Um, but I suggest getting on their website and downloading the latest version 
because when I went to the website there I think that what came with the recorder was probably about two or three versions behind so mine looked a lot different than others did on YouTube that I had looked up for guidance so keep that in mind so once you come here there are really only a couple of things you can choose here okay so you've got these little grade icons uh, the top one is for SDI and the bottom one is for HDMI it comes by default with SDI selected probably because I don't know most people are using a like full-blown like video camera with SDI outputs um, so you'll need to come in and select HDMI okay so once you're done there you can basically just stop at that you can just hit save and you're done um, there are conversions here where you can actually take your input signal and down res it um, it might come in handy for if you're recording um, we'll say in 4k but you really don't want 4k to, to upload to YouTube or something like that and you want to down res it to, to 1080p then then you can do that um, actually it doesn't say that you can do 4k my apologies you can down res uh, 1080 or 720 down to standard definition so anyways um, I don't have anything set up on that so that's it really so just make sure you're on HDMI and hit close I know right <laughs> I told you it was pretty simple so let's just hook up uh, I've got EM1 mark 2 here we'll hook that up just so I can show you how it works um, and I will open up an application and I'm doing this all on the fly this hasn't been pre-planned out which I probably should have done because like live TV you end up doing stupid things and looking like an idiot but hey that's what we do right all right so we're plugged into the EM1 Mark II and there goes the studio recorder to the floor all right so I've got my camera hooked up to the HDMI and you can see on the screen in the back I have nothing on the rear display so the camera knows that it is hooked up and I went into my camera settings and set it so that my HDMI is clean HDMI out all right and let me all right, so now that we're all hooked up, let's jump into using QuickTime to do a, um, a video recording. So basically, we're just gonna open up QuickTime, which I don't have it open, so. We'll open QuickTime up. Now I just wanna go to File, New, Movie Recording. And you can see by default, it wants to use an iSight camera, okay? but we don't want to use that. Next to the record button, there's a little drop down arrow. We'll click on that and we're going to choose the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And there you go. You can see on the screen, there we are. So there we are. And you can see you on the screen. So now if you wanted to run through the menu system, and share with everybody what you're doing for um, for your settings then this is probably going to be the best way to do it and like I said I'm planning on um, running through and doing some walkthroughs of different settings that I use and um, yeah I mean that's that's pretty much what I plan on using it for mostly um, I had initially gotten it because like I said I thought that man the EM1 Mark II would make a killer webcam but um, I'm thinking right now I think I need to focus on doing videos for you guys uh, to set that up so some of the stuff that I just kind of glossed over the retrieval of the software from Blackmagic the updated version of the software um, if you stick around right after this video shuts off I'm gonna do a screen share of the process of downloading that software and show you what to watch out for I actually do a screen share showing how I selected HDMI versus SDI and all of that so that's pretty much it you guys I, I'm telling you it was really simple it was pretty much just a plug-and-play operation you just plug in the HDMI plug it into the Blackmagic studio recorder which is dangling down here at the end of the wire there plug in the Thunderbolt plug in the Thunderbolt to your computer um, I do believe that they make a USB 3 version of this um, I just went with Thunderbolt because well, at one point it was the Mac standard. Thank you, new MacBooks. Um, 
but the throughput on the Thunderbolt connection is very fast, so perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish here. Um, so that's it, you guys. Hopefully I addressed everything. Again, when the video turns off, just keep watching if you want to watch a, uh, a uh, screen show or a screen capture video, whatever you want to call it, of, of the uh, setup of the software. Thanks for tuning in, you guys, and don't forget to check out that Lens Baby review that is coming up probably post Christmas. I need to get out and start shooting with that sucker. Um, it's a cool little lens. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right. Told you I'd be back. Just a really quick rundown of what it takes to get your Blackmagic uh, little studio mini recorder set up. So um, let me drag this over to this screen here for you. This is the application I was talking about. Uh, it's just a little desktop setup app that comes with it. Um, by default, when you first open this thing up, um, this is what you're going to see. It's this, this basic window and it tells you right here that your video input that's being the default video input for this device is the SDI input and that's not what we want to use. So this little circular icon right here, we'll click on that. We're going to switch it over to HDMI and hit save. We're done. <laughs> it's literally that easy. <clears throat> um, I will show you those conversions that I was talking about. So the input conversion, you can convert HD at, from 1080 to standard def from 720 or from standard def to HD. And I'm really not sure how the up works. It's not even something that I would mess with. I would just rather shoot in HD rather than trying to convert to HD. I don't know. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. <clears throat> so I just leave that alone. But that is the desktop video setup app. Um, what I failed to mention earlier, though, is that there are a couple of other applications that come along with this bundled on to the, um, well, actually, it bundled on to, <laughs> of course I drop it, it's an SD card. So Blackmagic sends uh, all their software to you on an SD card, because who uses CDs anymore, right? So anyways... So bundled onto the SD card are a couple of other utilities, um, actually several, but I'm just going to go over two more of those with you. So the first one is this disk speed test. Um, so I'm pretty much just using, uh, you know, standard, standard hard drives, you know, like platter hard drives, not SSDs. Um, you know, I've got several NAS devices and several external USB hard drives. Uh, my internal hard drive on my iMac is not an SSD, it's the Fusion drive. So again, it's a standard hard drive with a little bit of um, flash storage attached to it. So basically, um, if you just hit the start button here, it's going to show you how fast you can read and write to your disk that you're using. Um, and it'll show you whether you're capable of um, transcoding or transferring information uh, based on the different uh, formats here, you know, so 2K and, and so on. Um, so yeah, that's the disk speed test. Again, not something that I've used so far. Everything that I'm doing with 1080p video is working just fine. The few samples that I've done in 4K worked out just fine. Uh, ideally, you're going to want SSDs if you're really getting into it, I would think. So again, that's the, uh, the, the disk speed test utility that comes with it. The last one, though, is actually really cool, something that people might use. Um, I've only used it once or twice. Um, it's just this little Media Express app, which is basically a way to record video that is being um, fed through your mini studio recorder. Uh, I used this when I was first setting up the EM1 Mark II just to figure out um, how to set up clean HDMI out and how to switch it back over so that you do get all your on-screen uh, information fed through. Uh, it's really cool. It's an easy way to test out whether or not your hardware is working out right. Uh, again, this all just comes on the uh, the SD card that comes with your uh, your studio recorder. There are a few other applications that I have not used, and um, <laughs> so let me dig those up here for you. So one of these is called Live Key. And it's not even going to work for um, for the piece of hardware that I have. And it's basically just a switching program. So uh, one of the products that Blackmagic makes is this big board that you can put multiple video sources into. And this will just let you switch back and forth between those sources. Really cool if you're doing like some sort of a 
a podcast in a studio and you have multiple cameras set up and you want to be able to switch from camera to camera depending on who you want to be on on the the main screen i guess so but that's it you guys it, it really was that easy it was <laughs> just ridiculously simple and i know i'm looking away but it's just because i'm uh looking over at the other display so but that was it you guys it's just <laughs> Go into your settings here, set it up on HDMI, hit save, and you're done. Hope that helped. I uh, hope I uh, might have answered any questions you might have about setting it up. I know you're probably going to ask for settings on the EM1 Mark II. I guess that's why I bought this, so that I could uh, maybe make the next video going through setting up your camera so that you can do the, eight, the clean HDMI out, which is basically no display information just raw video straight through the the studio recorder and then switching it back over so that you actually get all the on-screen information so i guess that's a video to come uh thanks you guys for tuning in and i will check you out later don't forget that lens baby uh review coming up